welcome back to my channel. I am Jessica, the Bright Family Coach, and thank you so much for being here with me. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to work from home with a dog and actually be productive. So we're going to start out with five tips for working from home with your dog and actually being productive. The first tip I want to give you is to start out every single day playing and training and spending time with your dog. So get up and go for a walk. If you're not able to go outside and go for a walk, then play in and around your home. Take uh, toys out with you to a park and take the time while you're out on your walk or while you're walking around inside of your home and train. Now you can do this based on time or based on distance that you're walking, but let your dog, if you can go outside and take a walk, actually sniff and smell all the smells. And every so often you can either set a timer or just decide when we get to this point, we're gonna stop and I'm gonna ask for a cue from my dog, whether that's a sit or a come here, let your dog go you know, the full six feet away from you on their leash and ask them to come back to you and reward that with a treat. What this is gonna be doing is not only working your dog's body physically by going out on a walk, but it's also gonna be working your dog's brain both by letting them smell because they're taking in and processing all the smells that they're smelling and their brain works really hard to do that, but you're also going to interrupt that and ask them for a cue, which is gonna work their brain even harder. And what we know is that a tired dog is a good dog, so we're really going to engage them and work their brains as much as possible in the morning first thing. Now, once you're done with your walk or your play session or both, then we're going to be talking about having breakfast, both for you and for your dog. And when we feed our dog breakfast, whatever it is that you feed, I highly encourage you not to feed it in a bowl. Again, we want to use our dog's brain, whether that is scattering food around, um, using a snuffle mat, taking their food and actually freezing it the night before inside of a calm or maybe even hiding their food around your home so they actually have to go on a scavenger hunt to find it. That might be a little bit advanced, but if you work with your dog on this trick, maybe on the weekends, then you can get them to do it during breakfast time. And that way you can go ahead while your dog is eating and spending that time, not just relaxing the body after all the play and walking that they did, but continuing to use their brain to actively work to get their breakfast. This is going to occupy them and they are going to tucker out for a while so you can spend your morning getting stuff done. The third tip I have for you is to set a timer. Once you and your dog get on a routine, and I highly suggest you really start working on a, in a routine as quickly as possible. By the way, if you want some other suggestions of how to be productive while working from home, I've been doing it for six years and I have another video on my other channel that is not specifically about dogs, but just tips and tricks to actually be productive when you work from home. So I will put that that link in the description below. But again, that third tip is to set timers, work for 50 minutes and then play for 10 minutes. So set a timer for 50 minutes at a time and actually just work as much as you can that for that 50 minutes and then get your dog up in that last 10 minutes of the hour, get your dog up, go walk, go play, go do something active with your dog. So you're getting your body going, you're getting your dog's body going continue to work on training. If you're working on specific cues, then go ahead and do that. Have fun and learn different tricks with your dog. Spend some time every single hour. Get a break in for you, get a break in for your dog, and then they're gonna be much more relaxed and happy to just spend the next 50 minutes while you're working content laying down because you wore them out in that 10 minutes of the last hour. The fourth tip I want to give you is to keep your dog on a routine. So if you're not used to working from home and you anticipate going back to work, or even if you have decided, or maybe you and your boss have decided, or you're working for yourself now, that you are going to continue working from home, that's wonderful. But what I highly encourage you to do is to keep your dog on a routine. First of all, keeping yourself on a routine is going to help you be more productive, but also keeping your dog on a routine is going to help them to learn and realize when you need your time to work and when it's time for them to engage with you and play. And 
This is going to be, dogs are very similar to toddlers, and toddlers really, really thrive when they have a routine in place. Dogs are exactly the same. They need a routine. They need to know when it's time to play and when it's time to rest, and they will very quickly acclimate to whatever routine you set up for them. So definitely keep your dogs on a routine. My fifth tip and the final tip for this video is to set aside some alone time for your dog. And now I recommend this for everybody because it is going to help instill confidence and self-reliance in your dog. However, if you are in a position where you anticipate going back to work, physically leaving your house every day or five days a week and going into a job. Right now, a lot of us may be in a situation where we are working from home, but we anticipate going back, physically leaving our homes and actually going back to a job location. And one of the things that I can see happening and a lot of other people as professional dog trainers can see happening is that our dogs are going to get so attached to us being home 24 hours a day that there is a possibility that a lot of dogs may develop separation anxiety when they are Pet, uh, pet parents or owners go back to work and we want to prevent this. We don't want to deal with it once it happens. We want to intervene now and prevent it from happening. So I highly recommend setting aside some alone time for your dog. And this can actually be multiple times a day. This could be in the morning when you're feeding them their breakfast. This could be in the evening or afternoon. Um, just have a space, a safe space for your dog, not necessarily a crate. Not all dogs like crates, but have them in another room away from you for, you know, 45 minutes or an hour at a time, maybe once or twice a day. And that's going to be okay. Your dog is going to get used to it. Give them something to occupy them in another room away from you, whether that is, again, a, a Kong that's filled with their food or uh, a Kong that you filled with treats, or maybe you put down a puzzle for them to do. Um, some sort of interactive play that you can provide to them and let them be on their own. Let them relax and just enjoy relaxing on their own in another room. Maybe you can put on some relaxation music just for your dog in another room and let them take a nap in the afternoon away from you in another room. What the key thing here is to is to let them spend some time alone every day. And this is going to help them realize that they don't, while they want you around all the time, they don't have to have you there 100% of the time, 24 hours a day. This is going to be very beneficial and healthy for them to spend some time alone away from you. So I know I told you that at the beginning of this video that I have five tips for you, but I actually have two bonus tips that I want to provide you. And the first one is that you have, if you have other people in your home, especially other people who are maybe working in the home when they normally wouldn't be, have your dog split their time between the two of you. And a, a, incorporate their alone time still, but this is going to help them not develop any fixation on one person or the other. And the second bonus tip is to spend some time every day grooming your dog. This is another really great bonding experience, but something a lot of people may be overlooking, especially uh, dogs that tend to go to the groomers regularly. Don't forget to groom your dog every day, whether that's just, you know, brushing their coat, maybe brushing their teeth, and or maybe you do that every day. Maybe you only do it, you know, every few days, whatever it is. Make sure you don't skip any of that. Make sure you are um, bathing them regularly. Make sure that you are trimming their nails regularly. And I have some other uh, tips in my grooming video series, which I will post a link below to that. If you are struggling to figure out how to groom your dog, how maybe the best shampoo to use or how to trim your nails, I have a video on how to do that for beginners. And some of these tips are going to be very beneficial and helpful for you. So I will link those videos in the description below. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and in this video, I really hope that these tips are going to help you and your dog while you're working from home. 
And if you're going to put any of these into place, or maybe you start putting them into place and you're really loving them, please come back to this video or go ahead right now and comment below in the description. I'd love to hear your comments about um, working from home with your dog. What is currently going on with you and your dog? Why did you click on this video? What is keeping you from being productive? Is your dog just barking constantly? Let me know whatever it may be in the comments below. I love to answer your questions and just comment back to you when you have a comment. Also, if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Once you hit the subscribe button, what you're gonna do is join Pet Parent Nation. And what that does is let you become part of the family here at the Furry Family Coach. So hit that subscribe button. Once you do, a bell will pop up. When you click that bell, select all notifications. That way, YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you being subscribers and returning to my channel if you're new here. I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and come back to my channel and check out other videos on my channel. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.